Hello, I'm Jean Song, a member of the Pastor Nominating Committee. It is with great joy that I introduce our new lead pastor, David Prentice Hires. And I was one of the references for your new minister, uh, Dave Prentice Hires. I'm really excited for you as a congregation and for Dave and the family coming back across to Ann Arbor. I know they're really excited. So what are you getting with Dave? As a minister, you're getting someone who is faithful, who's dedicated, who cares for his members, who look after his people. Dave's hard working as a minister always looks to live out that gospel message in his community and with his people. My boys have a favorite spot on the beach in Troon and they love to go play and run to the ocean and run back to the sand and that's the same sand where the soldiers in World War II would practice the D-Day landings. And it's the same sand where the bootleggers would scrape up the whiskey barrels as they took them to the hills and Dundonald. And it's the same sand that pilgrims 1,200 years ago would process up and down on their way from Whithorn into Glasgow as Christianity spread from St. Ninian to all of Scotland. And for me, it's a great reminder that we build and bless what we are given and that God is present to us through our past, through our present and into our future and that God is always with us. And if I've gleaned anything from my eight years among the people of Scotland, it is that simply there is no separation between the sacred and the secular. God is present to us and God is calling us to be present to one another in the midst of all of life, profound and profane, blessing and curse. And ministry simply is learning to be attentive to the one who is always attentive to us no matter where we are in life in our birth or on our journey towards that forever place beyond death. You know, I ran away from my call to ministry as hard as I could. I am the son of a Presbyterian minister and a Baptist school teacher, and I had to walk away from my faith before I could walk back to it. And it was when I found a community where the koinonia could embrace my orange hair and loud punk music that I really began to feel the incarnate one inviting me into a larger understanding of what the world could be and what we we're called to be where we could be valued and loved, not because of our biography or biology or genealogy or geography, but we could be loved because we were embraced by a God whose very image is implanted upon our DNA. And as I came to faith, I learned that the church isn't always living up to what it's called to be, just as I'm not always living up to what I'm called to be. And so my journey to ministry has always been a recognition of not only my faults, but also my gifts as we live into the image of God within us. And so I love to preach, and I love to tell stories, and I love to engage in a Christianity with my sleeves rolled up where we get down and dirty, where the real heartbreak of the world meets the heart of God that says all shall be well, and eventually all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. And so my call to ministry is simply trying to live into the image of God within us and to recognize the image of God within every being. The values that he expressed and the, the things that he aspires to work on resonated with me. 
and then in, in watching his sermons, listening to his sermons, and, and recalling the sermons when he was here, um, I, I found those uh, enjoyable, but also inspiring, thought-provoking. And I, I love Dave's sense of humor, which is yeah. often self-deprecating. And so I found, it, I found it really easy to connect with him. He's open. He's in, an inclusive person. He's, he's high integrity, very genuine. What you see is what you get. Uh, they talked about his storytelling ability. Uh, and, uh, but, but despite how these people had connected with him and mm. how long ago that was, mm. every one of them used the word good, the term good friend to mm. describe him. Mm. So it's, it was impressive to me the connections that he's able to make with people, lifelong deep connections. Another term that came up over and over again was that he, well, that combination of terms, that he's a collaborative, but also a strong leader. And um, I think he's somebody that with us, um, he can lead us, but also somebody who will walk beside us. So I, I met my wife in South Texas. She was a program director at Mo Ranch, a Presbyterian conference center. And I uh, was a young youth minister bringing my kids down there for eight weeks the very first summer. And I saw her on the first day and I said, I'd really like to get to know her. And I found out she was moving to Northern Ireland at the end of the summer and I had just moved back from Scotland, but that didn't work. And so I found a lost dog and gave it to her and that didn't work. And I sent my kids to her with, you know, broken ankles and bloody knees and that didn't work. But then she found out that I had a sailboat and that worked. And on our first date, the engine broke. It actually really broke. It wasn't a ploy. And that first date turned into a second date. And then she moved to Northern Ireland and we corresponded and spoke nightly. And uh, our friendship turned into love and love turned into marriage and, and it turned into a family. And nine years ago, we were called back to Scotland and two weeks into it, we thought she had a fever, but instead she had a Finley. And uh, we welcomed Finley in 2014 and we welcomed Angus in 2017 and they are an absolute delight. Uh, they keep me sane, they uh, make me lose my hair, but within it all I continue to see day by day God's goodness at work in the world and they make me want to be a better person and a, a more loving dad.